Hi everyone, welcome to the latest uh, video blog we've got from the Visisoft team. And today I'm joined by Lee and we're talking all about pre-booking and capacity planning. Now, capacity planning and, and pre-booking was something that was introduced by through necessity in the last sort of, 12 to 18 months, that attractions have really had to manage their capacity and make sure that social distancing has been possible. Um, so it's really been a, a product of COVID and so it's been absolutely essential in allowing attractions to reopen and build up their visitor numbers over the last uh, 12 to 18 months. As restrictions have obviously started to ease, um, one of the questions that comes up straight away is, well, is this going to disappear altogether and we're going to go back to the to the old ways of, of turning up whenever you fancy if you've got an annual pass or even with a day pass just turning up on the day and and and, and queuing up to get in um, and it's a really interesting conversation because the feedback we're, we're seeing in the industry and from from customers is is a bit of a mixed bag really and some have seen some huge benefits beyond the the covid impact if you like of of pre-booking for both themselves and their visitors um, and there's definitely real interest and, and real um, benefit in those who want to keep keep pre pre booking in place. So Lee is obviously talking to a lot of our customers and a, a lot of attractions in the industry. So so Lee, can you share a little bit more about those findings and, and what you're seeing as 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 attractions thoughts on sort of post post COVID pre booking? Yeah, I think obviously a lot of them were forced into uh, the pre-booking. I think if you said to most attractions, would you do this without COVID? Probably 99% would say no. It has kind of pushed a lot of attractions to, to think about things differently. Um, but I think now the overwhelming response is that majority of attractions are not going to go back. They're going to mm -hmm. keep it at least in some form. Um, it, it has so many ben benefits, you know, both operationally and at management level that they can now plan who's going to be on each day rather than the kind of finger in the air approach. You know, if the sun comes out, we could suddenly be absolutely busy and not, not yeah. our staff. Um, or the flip side that you're overstaffed when you haven't got enough people coming through the door because of, of rain or, or similar. Um, and, and quite recently, there was an attraction I was talking to who, who said that on a typical day without pre-booking, they'd have about 150 guests on site and they end up having 1,200 like for like wow. same period before. Um, just because those guests were committed, they made plans around that pre-book date um, and, you know, not just financially, it obviously had a big gain, um, but operationally they were planning, you know, each day by day as they come, we could plan much further into the future as well, rather than very much ad hoc uh, as previous. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's obviously some really clear benefits and, and attract for an attraction. Flip it on its head from the visitor point of view, because if you're saying there's a visitor, you're, you're losing that bit of flexibility, aren't you? But but I guess if, if an attraction can plan better and if attraction can can have resource right and, and queues and, and things like that, right, that's going to add to the visitor experience as well. Yeah, I think there's always that apprehension um, of, you know, having to be defined by a date. But I mean, most of us sort of plan our day anyway or around those, those things anyway. So. And obviously now when you get there, you're pretty much guaranteed a better customer experience because as you mentioned, you're going to be waiting less time in a queue. If you want to grab an ice cream with the kids, there's going to be the right staffing level to accommodate the number of guests. Um, and I think, you know, things like reviews are so important to attractions now. I think that's going to be also beneficial that they're going to see better responses from customers, even sort of posters as well from a review point of view. Yeah. And do you think maybe as a, a bit of a middle ground going forward, there'll be a bit more flexibility in the possibility of being able to, to modify that date if you get a bit closer and the, the weather does look particularly poor that weekend? Uh, are we seeing that as a, as a I guess, a request with systems being able to handle that, that bit of flexibility with pre-booking? Yeah, definitely that self-service element. Um, I mean, obviously, before COVID and obviously people having to adapt quite quickly, you know, it was a case of having a huge team on the phones to basically take calls to adjusting bookets, bookings and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Now, you know, if we, if we take busy tickets as an example, you know, the customer can log in, change the date and time with certain restrictions, obviously, you know, you don't want a customer being able to cancel all of the events the day before or something of that nature, because then it kind of then doesn't have the benefit yeah, of the point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, certainly that self-service is, is really key uh, going forward. Have you seen any cases of, of attractions considering incentivizing visitors to pre-book potentially financially or, or by adding something to the experience by by giving giving the attraction that bit of commitment? Yeah, so I think um, sort of, you know, financially is kind of where most attractions are considering it. I think there's some hesitation because they're not too sure it is new. I mean, there's always been that element of 
it's cheaper to book online in advance. Um, but again, one attraction I was speaking to was considering putting up their ticket price by £10 per head as an incentive, which wow. is quite substantial. So yeah, they were yeah. really, you know, really motivated to get that pre-booking across to customers with the promise that they would get a better experience in the day. Yeah, OK, great. Um, and then just touching on on systems, and you, meant, you mentioned busy tickets there. If you are looking to keep um, pre-booking in place, what are some of those considerations you think you should be making uh, when it comes to, to customer journey and, and the system experience a, a, a visitor might have? I think it's simplicity really and having it all within kind of one user journey that the customer isn't having to, you know, in effect adapt the way they would book an, on a normal e-commerce platform really. You know, it's, you want it to be clean and simple, mm -hmm. you know, select when you want to come, choose a date, show the availability and then book a session you know, whether you have to pay for it or it's within your membership, um, you know, that can all be accommodated. But I think certainly having to have separate products that work around it and have to manually validate it, you know, when they're, the guests arrive, which has a whole plethora of other issues to deal with operationally. Um, so, yeah, clean and simple, I think, is, is, is the key, really. Yeah, great. Brilliant. Well, uh, th thanks for that, Lee. It was just, a, like I said, a, qu a quick chat on that, that interesting topic. And it'll be really interesting to see how things uh, develop over the back end of the season and, and into next year as well and, and and what the industry does with this 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 possibility and the benefits it could bring so um so yeah th thanks very much for that lee uh, and we'll join you again soon no problem thanks so much